Hello and welcome to In the Know. I'm Mark Crosby of Quincy Access Television. Thank you, as always, for joining us here today. In the Know is a program that helps you to stay informed on a variety of topics. Today, however, we will be talking about the Norfolk County Sheriff's Office. And joining me as a guide, as in programs <laughs> past, is the Sheriff of Norfolk County, Patrick McDermott. So, uh, Sheriff, uh, welcome back. Just call me Obi-Wan Kenobi <laughs> Okay. as your guide. <laughs> yes, exactly. Uh, Gandalf <laughs> from... Uh, the Hobbit. I you, guess. <laughs> the, you know, The Hobbit was a hard program for me, or movie for me to get um, involved uh, yeah. with. I think it was just ultimately at my age was too long. Yeah, it was quite long. If you get into The Hobbit and then the trilogy of The Lord of the Rings, it just it, it keeps going on. You can spend so. a lot of time there. <laughs> I was forced to read it in high school, so I had to see the movie to see if the if it was really true what I was reading. And I would suppose uh, Cliff Notes for something like that probably mm -hmm. don't exist. Don't exist. They weren't acceptable back then, and I couldn't get around that. It might not be acceptable <laughs> now either. Great to have you. Uh, it's always great to be here at QA TV. It's, it's fantastic. Thank, thank you for having you. me. Yeah, these programs, as we mentioned, though recorded here at Quincy Access Television, go throughout the county. Which is great. You know, saves me time from running around. Although I love but going on could. different shows. <laughs> Anybody that invites me, I usually say yes. But yeah. uh, it does save a lot of time from being able to get the word out to all the community. So I appreciate that. We certainly appreciate uh, all the time that you give us mm -hmm. here. And... Um, able to share what's going on in your office with, again, not only us, but uh, throughout the county, access centers throughout the county as Amen. well. Amen. Here we go. I do want to talk about, um, I'm going to, we're going to begin to talk about this first annual Sheriff's Cup. Yes. Now, we do have some photos that we will yeah, add right in. at the beginning. Oh, as a matter of fact, uh, you don't see it I here, but it, I can but tell you that, that we, we have you doing the opening ceremony. Yeah, this is, uh, you know, we, we, we dreamed this up literally right around Christmas time. Um, and ironically enough, it was at Christmas every year for many years back uh, in the 70s, 80s, and into the 90s when I, in the 90s when I took over the Greater Quincy Knights of Columbus Holiday Hockey Tournament. And so around the holidays, I, that was what I did. Christmas was over and then it was right into raising money for the Knights of Columbus and the charity programs uh, through that organization. So we were, we were out one night and just celebrating and having a, having a few laughs and we were talking about the days of the, the hockey tournament. I said, you know, it'd be great to bring that back. And we happened to be at the Fowler House with, with, uh, with John uh, McNeil, who's the owner there, who also um, is involved with Quincy Youth Arena and Quincy Youth Hockey. And we just got to talk, and I said, remember that tournament? And, and we said, well, why don't we have one? And uh, we just started chatting around, throwing it out there. I'd love to have it at the holiday time. He says, well, you know, what would really make an impact is February vacation. Um, a lot of people go away, but there's still a lot of kids around that, that may, in fact, need something to do. And so uh, we figured we'd give it a run. So we immediately jumped on getting through Quincy Youth, which was great. Quincy Youth Hockey did a great job getting the word out for us to all the various towns that have hockey programs. And uh, we got a few people to bite. And uh, the, the incentive was we, we ran this tournament uh, at no charge. Normally, you know, it sometimes costs up to, from what I hear, 1500 bucks for a team to participate in various tournaments. And so we decided not to charge. We're, we're raising money, um, you know, through other means to, to, to make sure that kids get the, afforded the opportunity to play, that financial means are not the test by which they can get on the ice. And uh, so we, got, we had seven teams to uh, take us up on the offer. And uh, so February vacation is here. And uh, we got those kids skating this week. We had a great opening ceremony. Um, and it's a test run because we want to see this as a, see some longevity. And we have a great trophy that was, uh, was made up called the Sheriff's Cup and has the badge on it. And uh, I'm really proud of the staff. And we, they really put this thing together, kind of a last minute thing. But uh, I think that the, the, what the feedback we're getting is the wow factor of having this and providing it for free uh, is going to take off. So we're hoping to resurrect this. Even this was this was kind of the inaugural. We're calling this the test run of February vacation, and I think the first annual sheriff's holiday classic is going to be this December. We're already booked at Quincy Youth Arena, so we'll get the word out. Hopefully, get we'll get the place packed with teams, and it's just great to see all the kids They're having a great time. You know, everybody's getting, getting a little swag from the sheriff and. You know, we get some pictures being taken. It just, it's just a really overall great event. And this is coming from a guy uh, who can't skate. I've never played hockey. I never was good at it. My brother, Chris, who's a Quincy police officer, 
watched him play. Um, he still coaches down on the South Shore. Uh, but I, I, lo I love watching the kids play in hockey, and it was really a rewarding experience this week. Looking forward to going this afternoon to the championship round and presenting the trophy uh, to one of the teams. Very good. We actually have a treat. I'll leave it at that. We have a treat at the end of this program. Fantastic. Related to the Sheriff's Cup. <laughs> uh, let's talk about um, blood drives. So this is a critical thing that, you know, it, it's been kind of driving me crazy for many years. I mean, I've, I've been donating blood since I was in high school. Uh, BC High used to run uh, blood drives quite frequently, and I always signed up, and I just thought it was just my, my duty to do so, because I just knew the value of that. And uh, having been through surgeries myself, I know that, uh, that, that you need blood on, on those occasions. Luckily, mine were all elective surgeries, but there's a lot of issues with, you know, day to day, the blood supply for uh, emergency sur surgeries, trauma, traumatic events that happen. But God forbid there's a major critical incident. And that's where my concern lies, is that it, God forbid something happens locally here uh, in Norfolk County or in Massachusetts or regionally. The blood supply through the American Red Cross basically says we're basically, we have about enough blood for a day, if we're lucky, a uh, day or two. Uh, that's critical. That is a major critical, and, and an incident can happen at any given moment. Um, so I think that we want to do in the sheriff's office is raise awareness about the importance of blood donation, how valuable it is. This is literally giving life to somebody else, uh, and it is a public safety issue, and we want to raise the issue. And the American Red Cross does a decent job, but unfortunately, even when you go to a blood drive, what drives me crazy is that they've got slots for 80 people and 14 show up. Um, and that's, that's just not acceptable. So we need to, to raise our game a little bit. And so we're going to participate. And luckily with us, what we did creatively here uh, is we go to you know, where our nation turned for many times in, in times of crisis. We went to our veterans. And our veterans have embraced uh, this program. Uh, we're going to go around to Norfolk County Veterans Halls, whether it's American Legions, VFWs, DAVs, uh, dealing with their local commanders. They're partnering up with us to host blood drives. I want them done on a monthly basis, and we're gonna drive the traffic. We're gonna drive the marketing. We're gonna par partner up with our local public safety officials in the various towns and see if we can get the numbers up so that, th so that blood supply, uh, th those statistics increase so that we are ready, God forbid, when we need to be, uh, if a critical incident occurs. So our first blood drive, well, we've been running blood drives, but this the first under this, kind of protocol uh, is going to be held at the Braintree Veterans Service Center, which is located uh, at the old Foster School in Braintree at 30 Foster Road. And we're going to be doing that on uh, Friday, March 8th. It's going to be from noontime to 5. And uh, people can sign up on our website uh, for that. I think we have a link for that, hopefully, that's up. Um, we do. We also have a, a QR, QR code. code. Perfect. And uh, people can take a picture on their screen, and that'll bring you directly to the website. It makes it so easy to sign up, make an appointment, come in. The staff are great, both at the American Red Cross, and we also partner with Children's Hospital. They do a blood mobile. They're going to be coming around mobily to do it as well. Um, and it's just, it's an easy hit. It takes about 20 minutes to a half hour between intake, the actual donation, and then about a five to seven minute rest period after just to make sure you're not woozy or anything like that. But it really is life-saving. That half hour out of your day uh, is well worth it. So we encourage people to participate and hopefully uh, just join on the Sheriff's program with that. And let's talk about that uh, as far as participation uh, to schedule an appointment. So schedule an appointment, we can, you can go to 1-800-733-2767. You can visit the Red Cross Blood, uh, uh, redcrossblood.org uh, to do that. And uh, basically, we, you can sign up on the Norfolk Sheriff's. Uh, uh, we, we have a site that's on the Red, uh, the, the Red Cross site that you can sign up and, and donate. So, Very good. I know next week uh, we are recording this program on the uh, 23rd. 23rd today. So yes. next week, I plan to be at an announcement 
for new senior programming. Talk about that. Yeah, so the Sheriff's Office has maintained an active participation with our local councils on aging, our, you know, our, our intergenerational centers around the county. Uh, we go out and do a lot of educational work. We've talked on this program before about Are You OK and the Files for Life program, the Yellow Dot program, uh, scams, and a few other issues that we always bring out to our seniors. Um, you know, it, it's a it, it, great program, but it was tired, and we needed to kind of reboot it re-energize it so my staff got together and they've been working for the last several months to put together a, a formal curriculum that we're going to roll out to the residents of Norfolk County um, on, on just a rolling basis it's a nine-week program and it covers all kinds of topics of in, in terms of health and safety wellness mental health uh, scam prevention uh, a whole host of things public safety within their home within their community and uh, we're looking forward to that. We're rolling that out. We wa we're launching it here in Quincy, and we're gonna roll it out to, I think, five councils on aging to start with. And we wanna make sure it's perfected before we roll it out to the rest of the, the uh, 23 town, 24 towns uh, in Norfolk County uh, after that. But it'll be a rolling thing. So we're, we're kicking this off on next Wednesday, I believe the 28th, and uh, we're doing it here in, at the Fox and Hound. We have 170 registrants already that signed up. So we have seniors coming in from various parts of the county. Um, we're serving a little breakfast. Um, we can handle up to 240 from what I understand. So if there's anybody that does watch this show and is interested, get in touch with us. Of course there are people that watch this there show. Are, of course there are. Well, if there are people watching it in time, I should say, because I know this rolls and, and goes, uh, goes ad infinitum. They I see this on YouTube 10 years from now. <laughs> yes. But if anybody is watching within the current status of it and is available, wants to come down and watch our senior rollout, you can come and uh, reach out to us. And we'll get you signed up. But we're going to go over our curriculum, kick it off. we got a lot of elected officials coming and uh, we want to do this with some fanfare and really get people excited about it and uh, and we're excited about it the staff has done an enormous amount of work on putting this together and uh, I think this is going to be a quite a valuable resource that that we're going to be able to provide for the residents of Norfolk County great this brings me now to some winter conferences and I guess before we actually get uh, to that all these ideas that um, that you share with mm -hmm. me that you share with the folks on this program really, uh, I'm sure, come from partnerships and interactions you Correct. have. Yeah, and you know, the, the, what I, uh, I, I wish I could profess and say to everybody how creative I am in putting these programs together, but um, I actually give a, give a talk, and we talk at these conferences, and I'm a, I'm a guest speaker at, and a lecturer at many of these conferences, and I talk about how to develop programming, and um, my message is very much based on the concept of, I call it rodeo. And uh, which the first three letters are R uh, O D, you know. And most people, when you hear R O D, they say, "Oh, that's uh, research and development and all that stuff." And I, I said, "No, no, that means rip off and duplicate." But I always add the E and the A for rodeo. It's rip off, duplicate, enhance, and own. Ah. So when you bring a program on, as in as similar things with our senior programming, the National Sheriff's Association, which was one of the conferences I attended last uh, a couple of weeks ago in Washington, they started the the the, the Sheriff's uh, Association nationally started the Triad program, which was basically the senior programming initiative that was rolled out throughout uh, throughout the United States, and sheriff's office could adopt that and. You Years and years ago, Sheriff Bellotti adopted the Triad program, and then we've kind of developed it and brought it into the 21st century now uh, for that purpose. So we believe in rodeo. Uh, most of our programs uh, are, are, are shared amongst, uh, amongst our peers nationally. And I think the sheriffs uh, collectively, when we get together at these conferences, it's a great opportunity to share resources, share ideas, uh, cultivate some, some initiatives, and then launch them. And, uh, and we're proud in Norfolk County uh, to be able to be a partner with both the national sheriffs, the major county sheriffs of America, and the American Jail Association, the American Corrections Association. And we, uh, we speak, uh, present at all of those uh, conferences, and uh, we're the benefit, beneficiaries of a lot of knowledge coming from those agencies. So it's a, it's a mutual relationship that we have with those groups. Let's talk about, um, I suppose, continuing with meetings and, and meeting with the folks in general, Washington, D.C. So Washington, D.C. is our annual opportunity to get together uh, both the National Sheriff's Association, the major county sheriffs of America. Those are the two largest sheriff's groups in the country. 
Um, and in, ironically enough, the week after us, the International Association of the Chiefs of Police are in Washington. So Washington is inundated with law enforcement and public safety during the month of uh, late January and into February. And so we were down there for a week and our conferences for national sheriffs and major counties were back to back. So I was down there in Washington for a week and uh, we had the opportunity to uh, to uh, go to the Hill. I have our day on the Hill with uh, our congressional delegation. Um, we have a fantastic group of representatives going that, that represent us in Massachusetts. And, you know, they all they oftentimes don't get the credit that they deserve. Usually the news leads with negative stories about our elected officials. But to actually engage, um, you know, with with our United States senators, you know, Elizabeth Warren was 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 really gracious in the meeting that we had with her. And she led it with um, with Congressman Neal, who's the dean of the de delegation from Western Mass. Um, but, you know, we had, uh, you know, from Norfolk County, uh, Jake Auchincloss was the, was with us. Uh, Ayanna Presley came in and Ayanna, I got to, you know, it, she and I disagree with, with a lot of issues sometimes, but she is right on the money when it came to uh, to uh, officer wellness and making sure that, uh, you know, that, that inmates are treated with respect and dignity. And we focus on rehabilitation and mental health. Uh, you know, Congressman Lynch was great and Congressman Keating. We really had a really good interaction and, and they share our values when it comes to the sheriff's priorities that, you know, about reentry beginning on day one, making sure that we have major significant investments in rehabilitation, education programs, work skill development, partnerships with our local community colleges and at the end of the day it comes down to a lot of its funding and we need our federal partners engaged in that in the department of justice um, as well as the bureau of uh, prisons and, and a few other federal agencies we rely heavily on and we make we need to make sure that they're properly funded so our congressional delegation you're not going to see a lot of headlines on this stuff but I got to say, the hour that we met with them, they were very engaged on the issues. They truly believe that public safety is a high, if not number one issue for the constituents that we all represent. And so, uh, so I'm very grateful for that meeting. Um, I'm fortunate because I'm, I'm the vice president of the Massachusetts Sheriff's Association. I'll be president next January when we head to Washington again. Uh, but I know that uh, I feel comfortable that once again, Massachusetts is leading the way in a lot of these things. Uh, when we present at these conferences, and we just did a, a Zoom presentation yesterday on the, with the National uh, Health Care Conference, and uh, we spoke about our reentry initiatives and our substance use disorder programs. You know, we're leading the way in Massachusetts, and that's something that I'm very proud of. And you don't realize it because we're living it every day. But when you go to these conferences and you share what we're doing, and you get a wow factor from your audience, that means we're doing something right. And they're, they're calling us to figure out how to do it. And so we're more than happy. And I've been doing a lot of traveling, going to various counties, meeting with sheriffs and jail administrators to, uh, to demonstrate to them how to set up their program. So we're very proud of what we're doing here in Massachusetts and specifically here in Norfolk County. Very good. Good to hear. Let's talk about uh, something that I wasn't familiar with, and that um, gets really involved with county government, Norfolk County, and the ties that the sheriff has to, let's say, the county commissioners. Correct. And so we, uh, not many people know this, but, you know, they, they, they meet me as the Norfolk County Sheriff. Uh, in my prior role, I was the Norfolk County Register of Probate. Uh, both of those positions are not county government uh, positions. Uh, both are state positions, actually. And uh, But the sheriff in particular hasn't been always that way. The sheriff, up until 2010, uh, was a county uh, official, a county employee, I should say. Uh, the county commissioners uh, were setting the budget for the sheriff's office. The, uh, the county treasurer managed the pension fund for the corrections officers and the other employees. And in 2010, because of budgetary issues and a whole host of reasons, it was more cost effective for the state to take over um, the funding mechanism for the sheriffs as well as the retirement system. So in 2010, we merged into the state system. So now my budget is fully controlled by the legislature, the governor, the secretary of administration and finance. And um, we basically kind of ceded from county government on a direct level. So 
that always bothered me though because we've got great county officials uh, you know county the register of probate the register of deeds the county treasurer the clerk of courts we got three county commissioners and so i i uh, i reached out to uh, one of them being joe shea our, our own here in quincy and dick stady from canton um, and uh, peter collins from milton and they uh, they they graciously invited me to to give a presentation on what we're up to in the sheriff's office. So I recently met with them and, and we had a great talk about, about creating some partnerships. There's some great resources that the county commissioners are in charge of. They're doing great work. And once again, another group of people that don't get a lot of headlines uh, and it's not for the lack of doing work. They work tirelessly to make sure that uh, services are provided for the residents of Norfolk County. And so whether you know, you're going golfing up at President's Golf Course, which is a hidden gem for anybody that hasn't golfed up there. Uh, they're doing a lot of money in renovations up there. Uh, the Aggie School, the Norfolk County Agricultural School in Walpole, a uh, significant investment there. Great pl place to send your kid. Uh, as an, kind of an alternate school, an alternative school for, for, for different, uh, different kids in, in terms of a curriculum. Uh, but we want to partner up as the Sheriff's Office with the county commissioners on some of the things that they're doing and uh, so that we can mutually benefit from that. So what could that mean? So one of the things we, we, we want to do is we, well, one of our big investments is in youth leadership and youth development programs. And certainly the agricultural school in and of itself is a, is a easy platform for us to go in and work cooperatively um, with the students there. Uh, certainly they, they deal with a lot of animals and agriculture uh, at the Walpole School uh, location. We also, um, have a partnership with the New England Wildlife Center in Weymouth, so that's a natural fit to kind of bring the, have the kids be involved possibly with that partnership. And then also we, we're, we're kind of interested in building out a full uh, greenhouse initiative at the Sheriff's Office, and I would love to have the agricultural school is a partner with that. And certainly recreationally, you know, we do our youth leadership camp in Braintree. Uh, I love the campus of, of President's Golf Course. Uh, I'd love to see us get more engaged up there and even possibly host a, uh, one of our annual summer safety fests up there. Uh, I think it's a great location. It would be a great thing for the northern end of the, the county with this part of the county to be able to celebrate President's Golf Course, our partnership with the Sheriff's Office and the county. And so uh, we had a great meeting and so I look forward to working with, uh, with our three county commissioners and our, our county officials to make that happen. Right before the end of this program, and again, we'll get to that special treat, I do want to talk about a CARES program. So NSO CARES, I think I've talked about it uh, here in the past. So, you know, not everything can get funded, um, you know, especially in, in lean economic times. The, the, the sheriff's budget, just like every other state agency, has to manage our budget accordingly. So I, a lot of our ideas and initiatives, uh, there's not always a lot of money for some of the things that we want to do. So we've had to come up with alternative sources whether it's grants or uh, donations we never really had a place to receive a lot of those things so we launched uh, nso cares back a couple of years ago at least on paper and now we're getting to the point now we're getting into the to the implementation of that nonprofit, and so uh, we're doing a soft kickoff a little bit of a i, I like a I like a party i like a good time and so we're having a we're uh, I, I for years hosted an annual salute to saint patrick a night on the emerald isle and so we're coming up we're getting out of winter we're getting into the spring so we're kicking off the sheriff's nso cares uh program on march 7th here in quincy at the adams heights men's club 6 to 10 p.m. We got the Danny Gallagher band is performing. Rob Buttimer, local kid here from Quincy, is going to be uh, our MC and hosting. I went to school with Rob. Did you go to school? Rob, crazy man, great committed guy. Uh, he's also a fantastic plumber, too. There's a little quick shout out for him. HVAC work. Um, but uh, we're going to have a great time. We're going to have corned beef and cabbage, you know, the old boiled dinner. We got uh, the Irish step dancing is going to be coming in. It'd be a wonderful opportunity for folks. So stay tuned. Follow us on the Facebook page. Uh, we'll get all the details for everybody about tickets. And I think it's going to be 35 bucks a person, $50 a couple. And uh, come on down. We're going to have some good time. And it's all to support the public safety programs that we're talking about, all the senior programs, the youth programs, uh, all the stuff that we're doing out in the community. Uh, we're really excited about this. We need to raise the money because we have a lot of plans and not everything can be funded by our taxpayers. Just, um, I guess, ramping up the um, anticipation. We have one more item to get to. Let's talk about uh, your office and hiring. 
So we are actively hiring. Uh, I don't wait until positions are vacant or available. We want to have rolling. If there's talent out there, we want to hear about it. We might not have a position readily available, but there will be one a month from now or two months from now. So in particular, we're always hiring for corrections officers. It's a big turnover sometimes. We lose a lot of our COs to uh, police departments because of the, the training they receive. But it's a real, uh, it's a calling for people. And I spoke to uh, students at Fisher College yesterday, and I said, uh, you know, corrections officers are, uh, are really, uh, they, 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 they don't go into the jail with weapons uh, to defend themselves. The only weapon they have is their mind and their mouth. They use language, they, do, they use de-escalation tactics uh, to calm the, the, the environment at the jail. And we need well-rounded different skilled people to come into our facility who are willing to work with some broken people to put them back together. And so it is kind of a, a calling for people. Uh, it, it is a worthwhile profession to get engaged in. So we encourage anybody that's interested, whether it's a corrections officer position or whether you want to work as a caseworker or if you're in medical field, if you're a nurse, mental health clinician, a sociologist, a teacher, we have all kinds of positions. And if we don't have it, and you, you're that person that says, hey, I have an initiative, I'd love to come in and do X, Y, and Z, give us a call. We're more than willing to create a position if one provides value to the organization. So you always can reach us out at norfolksheriff.com. Our employment page is listed there for current jobs, but just send an application in with a resume. And just say, I'll take whatever you got, let me know. Here's my qualifications. So get you it done. They say a picture paints a thousand words, right? Yes. So we had pictures of the sheriff's cop at the beginning of this program. We actually have video now. So if a picture paints a thousand words, I don't know what video Video is a million. <laughs> sheriff, I want to thank you uh, for joining prior to getting to this uh, video footage of the first annual That's it. sheriff's cop. I just want to take this opportunity to, again, thank you for coming in and sharing. Oh, thank you, Mark. Thanks for QA TV, and thanks to all the residents of Norfolk County. Okay, great. Let's uh, take a look at uh, the first annual Sheriff's Cup. I want to thank you for joining me and the Sheriff, and we uh, certainly hope that you support uh, local access TV in the community in which you reside. Welcome to the inaugural Norfolk County Sheriff's Cup. And we welcome our teams uh, to this tournament. It's something we kind of brewed up at the last minute, and so we're glad that uh, we've got team, our teams to participate. Uh, it'll be a fun three days. Uh, we look forward to watching the kids enjoy themselves uh, uh, here at the, at the Quincy Youth Arena. You know, at the Norfolk Sheriff's Office, we invest a lot of uh, our time and energy into putting together youth programs. And we focus on youth development and leadership. For 20 years, we've done a summer leadership camp for kids. And so we're always promoting that. We're always looking for new members to come and hang out with us in the summertime so we can go from the cold tundras here at the Quincy Youth Hockey Arena to the nice summer days uh, down in Braintree if you're ever interested. But we love it working with our kids. Uh, we're honored to do this tournament. We hope to, this is our inaugural one, kind of our test case, and we hope a, with a successful tournament this week, we hope to really set things on fire come Christmas break. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wait for the land of the at the home of the